Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In the last video we talked about move, scale and rotate command in 3ds Max. So in today's video we are going to be talking about snaps in 3ds Max which is really really important. Snaps basically help you out in modeling process and in a lot of other things. So before we head out to modeling I think it is really a good idea to talk about the snaps. Okay so let's get started. I have this box uh, which we made in the last video as well so let me go to modify as you can see that we can only modify these options uh, before we get started with snatch properly I just want to tell you something real quick uh, so that you have better idea about the terminology so hit shift and click and release I can make it make a copy click OK and I click right click and convert to editable poly which is one of the object types in 3ds max so if i click on this arrow you can see that there are vertices edges borders and polygons and elements what are these so if i click on this one these are the vertices so that means these are the different points which we, we can modify in any of these objects okay uh, then we combine two vertices with the line that that's called an edge so these are the edges. The next one is these polygons or, or the faces. So having said that, uh, let's go back and talk about the snaps. So by default, these are the snaps. Uh, these can be the 2D snaps, 2.5D or 3D snaps. By default, it is going to be a 3D snap. So let's click on that. And in order to see what kind of snap option we have, just right click on it and you'll see that we have these options. Let me click first of all on the grid points and then also on the vertex and then forget everything else. Just close it down. So that means now as you can see that it is snapping to different vertices. So I click here and then you can see that I can snap to different grid points. Right click again, grid points and let me try to click on the midpoint. I click here and as you can see this is the vertex. This is the midpoint. So I have snapped to the midpoint of that object. And if I click and there we have snapped to vertex. Uh, there's something really fun that we can do with the vertices. So if I go and create a box and click on auto grid as you can see that I can click on this snap. So I click click and then go there. There you go. We have used those vertices and made a box on top of them. If we didn't have the snap this would have been really difficult. Let's delete that. Right click on the snaps again and check about the end points. So basically the end points are going to be the end points of these lines and the midpoint is the middle point. Uh, there's something called bounding box. So click on that. Every single object in 3ds Max, let's say I click on teapot. If you try to hover over these objects, you can see there's a box that is outside that object. So that's called the bounding box. So we can snap the objects to the bounding box as well. Okay, if you want to. There you go, we have snapped it to the bounding box. Let's see the other options. Uh, so if I go and click on options, there are a couple of options here for the snaps as well. So we have the angle here. Let's say the default is gonna be 10. So let me bring it to 45, okay? Hit cancel. And for the angle snap, this is the tool. This is the option that we should enable. Click. And then let's say I come on the vertical axis and I try to rotate. You can see it is rotating by 45 degrees. Maybe try this one. Okay. Rotating by 45. So whatever angle that you define is going to be rotating with respect to that angle. Let's click here. There's an option down below. Okay. Uh, just below the angle, we have the percentage snap. Right now, this is 10. Let me bring it up to 50, let's say. And this is the percentage snap. So how is that helpful? So basically if you have some object and you try to scale it and turn on the percentage snap, scale the object, it is scaling by 50% as you can confirm from the bottom as well, bottom of the screen here. So it's scaling by 50%. Let's hit W for move and right click on this snap option, either this one or this one. Down below we have something called enable constraint. It is really important. Why? Let's see that I want to move this box only in a certain axis. Let's say only in the X axis. If I let's say click and move that you can see that it is moving all over the place. Even if I try to move in the Y axis or the Z axis is moving in all three axes at the same time. But if I enable the constraint, you can see it has constraint to a single direction. 
So if you click on any of these directions, let's say I click on the vertical direction. So when I move, it's going to be moving in that single direction only. I click on this X axis and I try to move there. As you can see, even if I try to move it up and down, it's going to be constrained to that direction only. So it's really important. Let's come here, enable vertex snap, uncheck the bounding box. We don't need that. Enable constraint, cancel that out. Let's try to copy this object. Come here, check the snap, hit shift, click and drag. Okay, we enable the snap. So basically we are going Going to y direction so i click on y press shift click and drag and then snap to this option now we can make as many copies as we want as you can see that we have snapped them perfectly with each other and all of these objects are there what else so we have a spinner snap now this one is a little bit tricky why why am i saying that so let me tell you that if i right click on this basically this is the option that we have that we can change okay so right now the value is two so in order to check uh what is two here so we have to go to customize unit setup system unit setup so inch so we have the system unit as inches although we have display unit as feet these all of these arrows anywhere in 3s max these are called spinners so if, if i click one time so it has moved 0.17 which is 0.17 feet or two inches uh i can right click and make it like let's say six inches let's see see 0.5 feet one feet 1.5 feet right click so that was the spinner so it not only works here but also let's say i create uh, a box here and i go to modify and i increase that it's going to be increasing by six inches at every single time so you can basically use these guys as your standard we have not talked about the 2d snaps and two and half d snaps so basically if i come here and i click on 2d snaps what it's going to do is that it's going to constraint the modeling to a 2d space so if i come here and click on plus come to the second option click on line if i say let's say right click 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 so that means it has constrained itself to that 2d space okay uh, if you don't snap to any vertex by default it's going to snap to the grid down below let me click delete that the second option is to and half d in order to show that I have to create a copy of this object and let me try to move it a little bit back. So let's say I want to use these two objects and then try to uh, make the use of two and a half D snap. So I click on line, hit Alt and W, go to another space. So let's play in the front view and I start modeling now. Click, click. Once I close the shape, you can see that although that space the box was way at the back i was still able to use the points in the 3d space to make um, an object okay of a line type in a 2d space if i come here in the left left view and click as you can see that although that box was at the way back i was still able to make a 2d um, a 2d rectangle using the line command okay so that's two and a half d it, it can come really handy in architecture purposes so click that so guys these are the only snaps that we're going to be using most of the time in 3s max i mean uh if you come here click on snaps these are all of the different options that you can explore yourself uh, these are going to be self-explanatory now and i hope you love this video if you want to see more content please subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you so much have a great day and bye-bye